The General Motors 4T65 e transaxle was introduced for the 1997 model year and has since become the mainstay unit replacing the 4T60e on many GM platforms. It is also currently available in some import models such as Volvo vehicles as well. Sometimes after overhaul, the vehicle may return with a complaint of long drawn out shifts while performing heavy load or wide open throttle shift maneuvers. The control module may or may not store a P1811 fault code when this happens. This occurs more frequently with fleet service vehicles such as police cars. Scan tool data indicates that the 1-2 or the 2-3 shift time is excessive. A high tap cell parameter is noted for the same shift, pointing to an internal problem. All the solenoids were replaced at the time of the original repair and the pressure control solenoid was adjusted. You open the unit only to see no obvious reason for the problem. The cause may be excessive clearance in the second or third clutch packs as much as 130 thousandths of an inch or more. This will require a large volume of oil to charge the cylinder before the piston begins to compress the wave plate and apply the clutch. This in turn may cause the piston to cock and bind in the bore resulting in premature wear of the molded piston and seal. Upon checking with a service manual, no specification for clutch clearance can be found. The reason for this is the factory does not make selective pieces for these applications. Their thinking is that if you acquire the correct overhaul kit for your vehicle, then no adjustments are required. As a general rule, clutches need 8 to 12 thousandths of an inch clearance per friction plate unless otherwise specified in a factory service manual. Less than 8 thousandths of an inch and you risk having the clutch drag when it is not applied or lack adequate lubrication. The second clutch has six friction plates. Referring to the general rule, our preferred clutch clearance will be 48 thousandths to 72 thousandths of an inch. If you have enough room, you could add an extra steel plate on top of the wave plate. If not, then there are thicker steel plates currently available from Alto products. Do not attempt to eliminate the wave plate. If it is damaged, replace it. Refer to figure one in your white seminar book for the second clutch stack up. Some clutch packs use a friction surface on one side of each of the drive and driven plates instead of the common friction and steel plates. If this is the case, as with our third clutch stack, then pick the number of drive or driven plates, not the combined total of both when referring to the general rule. In this unit, we have five, which means that our preferred clearance will be 40 thousandths to 60 thousandths of an inch. If there is enough room, you could remove the friction material from one extra externally splined driving plate and place it on top of the wave plate and then add the regular stack of drive and driven plates on top. Another possibility would be to substitute various model 4T60E or later model 440T4 third clutch plates until the desired clearance is obtained. These plates are available in a variety of different thicknesses. Refer to figure two in your handout. Further <coughs> modification can be made to the second and or third clutch feed orifices in the spacer plate. Opening these holes ten thousandths of an inch larger than they are now will allow the oil to get to the clutch faster. This option should only be considered when all other possibilities have been eliminated. For orifice location, refer to figure three. Another complaint that may be encountered from time to time is the unit shifting out of sequence. When cold, it starts in second or shifts 1-3, even though the correct commands are monitored and verified. As the vehicle warms up, the trans works fine. This may or may not generate solenoid performance codes such as PO751 or PO756. Solenoid mechanical problems or sticking valves would be the usual suspects. But a lack of actuator feed oil volume or Pressure to the solenoids can be easily overlooked. After thoroughly cleaning and inspecting the valve body, 
Locate the actuator feed limit valve in the channel plate. <laughs> Remove the retainer, spring, and valve from the channel plate. Ensure the valve moves freely in its bore and the orifice cup plug is present and not clogged with debris. Next, <laughs> find the shift solenoid A and B orifices in the spacer plate as shown in figure two and open them up to 35 to 40 thousandths of an inch maximum. I prefer to use a handheld twist drill such as this one for the task. Clean or replace the two solenoid screens and don't forget to replace both shift solenoids with new ones. Alrighty then. Last but not least, don't get burnt by this one. The vehicle comes to the shop with no 3-4 shift. The computer command for fourth gear has been monitored and the signal verified, but it doesn't happen. The control module may or may not store a shift solenoid A performance code PO751. The culprit is a strip spline at the base of the fourth clutch <laughs> hub and shaft where it connects to the input sun gear as shown in figure one. You would expect this problem to generate either a ratio error or solenoid performance fault, but most of the time this problem shows up with no fault codes at all. This is a quick and easy one for fast cash. Okay, sit tight because we're just getting started. There's lots more good stuff coming up.